Hi, I'm Patricia Riddle and I'm a Professor of Applied Neuroscience. I'd like to take some time today to talk to you about my contribution to the Certificate of Applied Neuroscience, which I run with Ian McDermott on behalf of ITS. This programme brings together my expertise in neuroscience and ability to interpret the field in ways that are relevant. With Ian's depth of knowledge of coaching, leadership, innovation and other areas relevant to organisations. Our understanding of neuroscience is changing rapidly and it's a full-time job to keep up. It's therefore important that there are individuals that can translate this knowledge in ways that make it relevant and easy to use. It's also important that the information that people are getting is well evidenced, reflects the latest scientific thinking and is definitely not psychobabble. This requires that the neuroscience content comes from a credible source. So, what's needed is an expert who can explain the terminology, provide a basic outline of the current state of play in a field, and who therefore makes future learning easier. And this is one of the functions that I perform on the certificate programme. I am the expert guide that simplifies complex ideas and presents them in ways that makes their relevance easy to get. In addition to this, I'm constantly scanning for new research that is relevant to the topics that we teach on the course. So for instance, I recently came across this paper by well-known colleagues published last week, which is on strategic decision-making. This caught my attention because while we know lots about how we decide between specific options, there is very little neuroscientific research that has studied how we make strategic decisions. So, in this paper, one and his colleagues used fMRI techniques to image the brain of individuals who play shogi, a strategy game. One of their findings was that choosing a defensive over an offensive strategy resulted in greater activity in the posterior cingulate cortex, an area of the brain that changes our focus to the negative consequences or risks of particular strategies. So strategic thinking appears to constrain our choices by directing attention to either the risks or the opportunities of particular actions. This research is only a start and leaves us with so many unanswered questions. I would want to know, for instance, whether there are differences in brain system activation between good strategists and poor strategists, and whether we can design ways to improve strategic thinking that therefore change the patterns of neural activity. Both Ian and I have over 30 years of experience in our respective fields. Ian is world renowned for his expertise in coaching and innovation and is also well known for his ability to train others. Together, we have a unique ability to create learning that's informative, innovative, interactional, but most importantly, fun. I strongly recommend that if you want to learn more about neuroscience in its most applied form, you come and join us on the programme. And I look forward to seeing you there.